Welcome to another session of Microengineering. In today's lecture, we are going to take double stub matching. We have already seen, gone through the lectures of single stub matching, where we had seen that single short circuited or open circuited stub, whether in shunt or series configuration, was placed in a microwave circuit. Now, the advantages of having a double stub, um, as we know, it is a matching network. We are trying to have ZL, that is load impedance equal to Z0, so that the reflections can be cancelled the reflection coefficient value can be 0 and VSWR becomes 1. Now let us see how does the circuit look like. If you look at this circuit, you find over here, you find that we are placing two stubs and this time we are placing two short circuit stubs. You can see over here, I am telling you because of this diagram, some short circuit stubs are placed and they will be placed at uh, two positions. So we are supposed to find uh, uh, two, posi two positions at which both the steps have to be placed. So we are going to have L1 and L2, L2, L1 and L1 dash, L2 and L2 dash. That is, as I told you, for each point, there will be two possible sets of solutions. So that is what we are going to find. So we are going to have L1, L, L2, we are going to find about the D1 and D2 too. So let us see the problem. Through the problem, I will be explaining the steps to you. The question that has been given is that the terminating impedance ZL is 100 plus J 100 ohm and the characteristic impedance is Z0 is 50 ohms. So here characteristic impedance of both the line and stub is 50 ohm. The first stub is placed at 0.4 lambda away from the load. This is a catch, a twist in the problem. Normally this twist is not given in the problem. We can directly go. I will be telling you what things to be done when this is not given. The spacing between the two stubs is given 3 lambda by 8. This is important configuration. Remember the spacing can be either lambda by 8, 3 lambda by 8 or 5 lambda by 8. What difference will it make? That I will explain while explaining the steps to you all. We are supposed to find the length of the short circuited stubs when the match is achieved. This problem has been taken from Samuel Lear book. The steps we start first by normalizing. Uh, since the impedance is given is 100 plus J 100 ohm, we will be dividing it by 50, you get the answer as 2 plus J 2 ohms, which has been done for you all. Now, then we are going to plot the VSWR circle. We are supposed to plot the admittance value. If you remember, this is a shunt configuration, hence we are going to find it in admittance value. How do we do that? We will plot the VSWR value and draw a straight line passing through the center, passing through the impedance to the opposite point, that is admittance value. Please note, I want this answer not only in the terms of admittance, this acceptance value, we need it in terms of lambda. So I have written the steps that the students need to draw a straight line passing through the impedance point, center of smith chart and admittance points outside the line. So that line in the outermost part of the smith chart, that value will you will get it as 0.456 lambda. It is marked over here, 0.456 lambda. Now in the problem it is given that your load is 0.4 lambda away. So as a result, when you add 0.456 and 0.4 lambda, it becomes 0.856. Total circumference of Smith chart is only 0.5 lambda, 0.5 lambda. So maximum you can plot only this much. So you will be dividing 0.356, subtracting 0.5 from that and remaining you will get 0.356 lambda. This lambda has to be plotted and then you will get the admittance value. I hope it is clear. The admittance value which you get from now on you should be naming it as YD1. This is important. You should be naming it as YD1. Now, if suppose this 0.4 lambda was, thing, was not given to you, meaning the load would not have been away, uh, any distance is not given, then what you will do is whatever YL admittance value you get by normal plotting, that becomes YD1. Please note students, I am repeating, uh, repeating it again. If suppose the distance of additional load is not given, then whatever admittance value you have plotted, that becomes your YT1. So this was a twist in the problem, maximum twist that I, they can give you in the problem that I have taken account. So in normal circumstances, whatever admittance you plot, that becomes YT1. Now you, now we will be discussing the steps to draw a conductance circle. How do we draw a conductance circle? If the conductance circle has to be rotated. It's a normal unity gain circle, but you have to make this time. How do we do that? It has to be rotated through an angle of 2 beta L. 2 beta L. Now in this, beta we all know it is 2 pi by lambda. 
but the spacing of L is given as 3 lambda by 8. While substituting, you get the answer as 3 pi by 2, that is 270 degrees. Now, 270 degrees means uh, normally if you draw a quadrant, when you draw a quadrant, what is this? This we go it in. Uh, this we do it in this way. This will be your 90 degrees. Right? This will be your 90. This will be your 180. 180, and this is going to be your 270 degrees. So that means the Smith chart which you are going to draw. How do we draw the 370 degrees? Is that you will put put a scale at the center here. You will put a scale at the center here, take the distance between the two and then take the midpoint of this, midpoint of this. Keep the center of the compass, keep the center of the compass here at the center and draw a circle. When you do that, this becomes your conductance circle. This becomes your conductance circle. Now suppose the spacing was given lambda by 8. Tell me what will happen if the spacing is given lambda by 8. Let us do it again. So lambda by 8 means what value will you get over here? So it will be 2 into 2 pi by lambda and it will be one minute. So 2 into 2 pi by lambda into lambda by 8. So are you getting pi by 2? I hope you also have solved. You are getting pi by 2. Pi by 2 is how much? 90 degrees. So 90 degrees means what will you do? You will take a scale. Keep it over here. Keep it over here. Keep it over here and keep it over here. Take the midpoint of that. Keep the center at the compass here and draw the circle. So it will be something like this. I'm sorry, it should pass. To it. Huh, something like this. So this is how you draw a conductance circle. Let's go to the next slide. Now, once that circle is plotted, we are supposed to we are supposed to move it. Now, how do you move it? I'm just showing you schematic diagrams, and we'll see in Smith chart. Now, uh, your circle is drawn somewhere here. Am I right? Somewhat here because it was at 270 degrees, and uh, your point will be approximately somewhere. Here, you're going to get your point. Point is going to be somewhere here this time. Okay, that was your yd1. So we are going to move this point. So how do we move? Remember, we have to always move in clockwise direction. So in clockwise direction, when we move along your y11, which was 0.55, which you're going to get it as 0.55, you just move it along that contacting circle and you get it over here. This point becomes your y11 y11 one, one. and same way when you move it along the or resistance circle it becomes y11 one, one dash y11 one, one dash so you need to find out the value of this remember the resistance value remains the same only your susceptance value will be changing so you're going to get for y11 one, one, you're getting minus j 0.11 for y11 one, one dash you're getting minus j 1.88 now uh, once you get this we are supposed to find y s1 and y s1 dash I hope you remember the diagram which we had drawn. We had shown it. It was something like this. When you're keeping a stub, when you're keeping a stub like this, what happens is that you are trying to find two values, meaning you are supposed to find distance. I mean to say this distance, you're supposed to find the distance and you're also supposed to find length. I'm teaching you to find the distance. This I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find this. Okay. So for this, we are going to have the admittance value over here. Uh, the concept is same that the real value will be cancelled and you are getting the susceptance value. So while you are solving by this problem, y11 equal to means the first point. y11 is equal to yd1 into ys1, the susceptance. From this, I got the value of ys1. Similarly, you are supposed to find ys1 and ys1 dash. Now, when you get uh, YS1 and YS1 dash, you're supposed to plot this in Smith chart and get in terms of lambda. That means wherever you're getting, suppose Smith chart is over here. I'm just uh, drawing approximately. So, it, suppose you're uh, getting, you have plotted plus J uh, 0.97. I know that my plus J1 will be always approximately here. So, it should be somewhere here. So, when I'm plotting this point, I want you to draw a straight line, move outside this line. So this value, whatever you get, that's going to be your 0 0.192. 0 
0.123. This is what I am trying to tell you. In terms of lambda, you tell me. So, the total length L1 will be 0.123 lambda. One minute. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's a mistake. I'm sorry. This is 0.123 lambda plus 253 uh, lambda. Then you will get this answer. I'm sorry. There's a mistake here. Please note, this is a mistake. Uh, here, 0.123 lambda you have got over here. This 0.123 lambda, since it is less than 0.25 lambda, you will add 0.25 to it and get the final answer as 0.25 lambda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This, please make sure. So, this is what it is going to be. Your final answer is 0.373 lambda. Now, what happens for L1 dash? For L1 dash, for L1 dash, what will happen? Your Y S1 dash is minus J point A. Suppose it is here, minus it is. So, suppose it is minus J point 8, minus point 8. Then what happens in terms of lambda? What answer you are getting? You are getting 0.393. This is greater than 0.25 lambda. You subtract that and the final answer will come. 0.143 lambda. So you have got your length of uh, transmissions. I mean, sorry, you have got the length of the subs, meaning the stubs which you have made like this, you have actually plotted the lengths. Am I right? You got two lengths like this. You have got the lengths as L1 and L1 dash. Now we are going to move towards the second part. In the second part, you are going to move these points to the unity gain circle. Now, how do you move to the unity gain circle is something like this. You have written that you have got as yd2 is 1 minus j uh, 0.62 and y2. I'll tell you how to do that. Suppose you have a smudge chart like this. You have already made your 270 degrees somewhere here. I hope you remember we had marked this points, right? You had your y11 like this. You had your y11 dash like this, if you remember this. So what we want to do is that you have somewhat something like this. You have this unity point. So I want you all to highlight your unity gain circle. When you highlight this unity gain circle, this point which is there y11, you need to keep your center of compass here and take the radius of this point. Just take the radius this point. Just take the radius. And it, by keeping this compass at the center, rotate this. When you rotate this, go on rotating till it cuts inside. Till it cuts inside. The moment it cuts inside, that point we call it as YD2. It's called YD2. So in the last previous slide, we have shown you the value of that YD2 came out to be as minus J.62. After you get that minus j.62, you are supposed to plot the complex conjugate of that and in terms of lambda, you will tell me the value. Now, over here, I have got yd2 dash. How did I get that? I will take this y11 dash, putting some other color. I will take this y11 dash. See, I will take this y11 dash and I am just going to rotate. Same way, students. Same way. Uh, center the compass like this. You just, sorry, just rub it. Uh, I'm saying that I'll just take this point. I'll, I'll, I'll just take this radius. Yes. And just rotate the circle. Okay. We're going to take the radius like this. Just rotate the circle. And this circle comes and cuts somewhere else. Somewhere. And this point, you're going to get it as, that is this point, which you want. So, this in terms of lambda, when you're going to plot as complex conjugate, you'll get 0.3903 down and since this value is greater than 0.25 lambda we are just going to subtract it from it so your final answer comes out to be as 0 0.059 lambda i know these are there are a lot of steps in that but once you practice this this becomes very easier and this comes in paper for 10 marks right now let's go to the smith chart and have a look over it
for your reference one animation uh, not an animation i'm mean just trying to show it to you how it looks uh, don't worry i'll show different colors so it becomes easier for you i'll just follow the steps along with me then it will be easy for you so um, we are going to have a while you remember i told you that we are plotting an admittance that circle it's called a vswr circle they have plotted this circle and this is zl and see how they have drawn it i'm just uh, showing it to you see the way they have gone look at my cursor see the way it has gone down it became yl now this yl is at point uh, 458 i told you i'm getting point 458 we are supposed to do what we are supposed to add uh, point 4 lambda to it it becomes point 858 and it's greater than point 58 i mean you do that subtraction finally you come to this value can you see this it becomes point 3858 lambda it's important this point 358 lambda in terms of uh, admittance value you are supposed to let us know so what do i do i draw a straight line i draw a straight line outside can you see that and uh, this is the vswr circle which i was drawn there it has intersected and this point they started calling this as yt1 and i have given you the value of yt1 in the notes you can see it is 0.55 minus j1.08 you can check that now after drawing that we are supposed to uh, draw the conductance circle i have already given the steps uh, in that uh, notes you can just go through it uh, for your reference uh, the distance is given 3 lambda by 8 so the in angle it becomes 270 degrees 270 means this is uh, 270 it will come in the third quadrant down and the circle is already plotted so how do we do it i have to already told you take a scale keep it at the center take the midpoint keep the center at the point and draw the circle this is how you draw it once that circle is drawn this yd1 which is there we are supposed to swing this point now how do you swing the point please note uh, you can have a reference like this you have your 0.55 your value of yd1 was 0.55 minus j1.08 so minus j1 0.55 that is a circle i hope you understand that when i'm saying it that's a circle can you all, all see this red line which i'm plotting this is actually a circle a circle which was there on this resistance line you are supposed to swing through it so in the clockwise direction when you swing and you stop when it touches your conducting circle which you have plotted this becomes y11 and on the left hand side when you swing same way you get y11 dash am i clear with that so you get y11 and y11 dash y11 you will get 0.55 minus j.11 And by one one dash becomes 0.55 minus j 1.88. Now, what do we do? Now we will need to find the other set of values, which we call it as y s one and y s one dash. For that, a formula is given in the notes. Please refer that. You will get as y one one equal to y d one plus y s one. And when you solve that, you get the value from the calculation as y s one s plus j 0.97. Fine, plus j 0.97. Now plus j point nine seven is where in Smith chart. So you need to plot uh, plus j. Can you see over here? So you don't worry. This is nothing but your y s one, which you get it from notes that uh, formula I have given. So you get y s one. Please plot that in terms of lambda. Let me know the value. Do not get surprised at how they are finding in terms of lambda. Just draw a straight line from the center up to this point. Everybody, can you see that? And in terms of lambda, you will get this value as point one two three lambda. the concept is same since it is less than 0.25 lambda just add to it and you get the final answer of l1 as 0.373 lambda that's your first l1 how do you find l1 dash similar way for the other uh, solution you will get y s1 dash as minus j.8 so minus j.8 so you can just find out that minus j.8 will come in the down portion so after plotting that becomes 0.393 See, see over here. I'm using some other color. It becomes easier than. I'm seeing this one. I'm going uh, telling about this. So you'll get minus j point a. And when you're plotting this value, which is there, this is also greater than point two five. Subtract from it. Whatever answer you get, you get your l one dash as point one four three lambda. Okay. So this is how you go the first part. First part. Now let us go to the second part because we have got l one and l one dash. We have not got your next set. L2 and L2 dash we have to find, so that we will plot in that because that is already confusing there. Now uh, for the second part to find L2 and L dash, how do I move about? Very simple. First of all, you are supposed to uh, highlight your unity gain circle. In this case, unity gain circle over here, unity gain circle over here is already highlighted. Very dark black color circle you can see over here. In, in your Smith chart also you can do the same way. Huh? It is there. It's already highlighted. it depends what type of smith chart you have actually 
you should not have a very dark resolution is chart then it becomes very difficult to you know see the smith charts so uh, you have this unity gain circle and after that you are yd1 was over here do you remember this yd1 you remember this yd1 yeah so now keep the center of the compass here and draw uh, uh, take the radius of this yd1 oh i'm, I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry very really sorry one second I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. You are supposed to take. You are supposed to take the radius this of this y one. Yeah. You are supposed to take the radius as this y one one. Take the keep the center of the compass here. Take the radius as y one one. And you are supposed to plot this point. So what did I say? This point. Can you all see this? It's been already done by for you. See the way it is moving. Please see. You just have to take it and just till it cuts. Till it cuts. How does it cut? Inside the unique circle. See how do we remember is that all the external points means this is the external point. The first point should be always cut inside the unity gain circle. The second point will be cut outside the unity gain circle. Meaning this is the second point y11 dash. So I will take a center of the compass here, take a radius and cut it. So how do I cut it? Can you all see this? I can just follow it. Just follow this. Just taking it and it's going like this. It's very difficult to move, you know, along with it. Just have to cut it actually. Just have to cut it. Just cut it. So when you cut this, this point becomes YD2. Once you get your YD2 and YD2, suppose YD2 and YD2 dash becomes your YD2 dash, you are supposed to take the complex conjugate of that. For example, when you take YD2, you had got plus j point six two. Am I right? I'm talking about this point. I'm talking about this point. This point of y d two. When they solve, they are, when you plot it from the Smith chart, you will see this value of susceptance comes plus j point six two. So I'm sorry, minus j point six two because it is in the lower half. That complex conjugate has to be plotted. So complex conjugate of minus j point six two is comes out to be plus j point six two. They have got point six one. Uh, while we solved, we had got this. Anyway, difference doesn't matter that much. Up to 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.63, thick, it's fine. So this is plotted. And in terms of lambda, you got the answer as 0 0.088 lambda. This lambda is less than 0.25. So you can add it and the final value of L2 comes out to be 0 0.338 lambda. Similarly, you will find for YD2 dash also. And the value you will see, it will come at st uh, stop at you are getting some yd2 dashes plus j2.6. So when you take complex conjugate of that, it becomes ys2 dash as minus j2.6. So minus j2.6. So this should be somewhere. So we will just plot that minus j2.6 is 0 0.308. It's over here. Can you all see everybody? They have plotted the y s2 dash. We have got the value of 0 0.308, which is greater than 0.25. They subtracted, and whatever answer you get, that becomes 0 0.059 for us. We have solved, and they will get 0 0.508 lambda. So in this way, after solving this, your answer stops only. The answer stops when you come over here, and uh, here you will plot the value of l1, l1 dash, and l and l2 dash and then the final answer gets stopped you are supposed to draw it can you see it is a short circuit hence we have drawn this lines in this way right in this way we are going to complete your double step matching thank you